the secretary and I have traveled to a number of different states and we have heard the harrowing and very sad stories, but we also have increasingly met those who have successfully gone through treatment and recovery. We're very heartened to learn many people who are eating the opioid epidemic and we recognize this is a poly drug problem in our nation, that we are a nation that consumes legal and illegal drugs at a very high and alarming rate. The problem is very complicated and currently we're on the losing side of this war. With the President's leadership and the First Lady's involvement across the spectrum of different cabinets and agencies and different departments within the West Wing, we are confident that we can help those in need across this country. We know that this involves public health, the medical community, the healthcare delivery system, law enforcement, education, local and statewide elected officials, devastated families, and those in treatment and recovery. Uh, we have presidential imprimatur and leadership on this issue, but we full well know that most of the great work is being done at the state and local levels. Those who are closest to those in need know best how to help them. We didn't get here overnight, and we know that we can't solve the crisis overnight either. That said, I'd like to bring attention to some other areas with respect to the opioid and drug epidemic that sometimes go uncovered. Uh, with a 52.7% increase in outpatient veterans treated for substance abuse disorders from 1995 to 2013, it's an increasing concern that addiction is plaguing our veteran community as well, and we're working with Secretary Shulkin on that. The next generation of the crisis is being seen in the number of newborns that are born addicted to opioids and other drugs. In fact, in this country now, NIH estimates that every 25 minutes a newborn is born addicted to opioids. We are working hard um, to also stop the import of fentanyl into this country and to work with those governors and health, health commissioners and others within the states who are interested in reducing the number of pills and days in a prescription and also in working with the curriculum so that our medical professionals are more educated and more conversant with and versed in prescribing methodologies as well. President Trump and the administration are working tirelessly toward this and I would just say that having traveled this country and studied this issue very closely, no state has been spared and no demographic group has gone untouched. This is not a problem of young or old, of black or white, of rural, urban, or suburban. It really has affected all of our communities in varying degrees. It is also a nonpartisan issue in search of bipartisan support and bipartisan solutions. And we do hope that those in a position to help with the decision making and advocacy and solutions and those charged with covering this issue as well will agree that it is nonpartisan in search of bipartisan solutions. Thank you very much. I have to take a question or two, yes. Secretary, a couple of questions. Uh, several attorneys general, including some Republicans, have said manufacturers of opioids should be sued and are culpable or should be legally culpable for parts of this crisis. Do you agree with that? What's the administration's orientation to those laws? Well, the, uh, there are a couple suits that are out there right now that have already been uh, uh, begun. Um, I think that uh, this gives voice and, and punctuates uh, the, the damage uh, and the harm that people have felt uh, because of, of this crisis. Um, uh, there isn't a position that the administration has on, uh, uh, on, these, uh, on these suits at this point, uh, but it has clearly gotten the attention of, uh, of the, the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, some have analogized it to the tobacco uh, issue. Uh, and the master settlement that occurred um, I don't know, 20 years ago uh, with, uh, with the issue of tobacco. Whether this is something that's analogous to that, I, I, I don't know. But Do it's you see a, it in that light, Mr. Secretary? Well, I, what, what I see is that uh, there is, uh, th that we continue to move in the wrong direction on the number of individuals that are not only addicted, but the number of individuals that are, are losing their lives to addiction. Um, and so uh, the president is absolutely committed to solving that problem, and we are going to turn over every single rock and make certain that we're identifying every single thing that could move us in a better direction. Is this a national emergency? Well, the president certainly believes that, that, it is, that, that we will treat it as an emergency, and it is an emergency. When you have, uh, when you have the capacity of, of uh, Yankee Stadium or Dodger Stadium 
dying every single year in this nation. Uh, that's a crisis that, uh, that, that has, to be, uh, uh, has to be given uh, incredible attention, and the President is, uh, is giving it that attention. Mr. Secretary, thank you. Thank you. I was curious, um, those of us old enough to remember the crack problem 20 plus years ago, how is this different, and how is the approach to deal with the opioid problem going to be any different? And are we just going through a cycle of a new crisis every 20 years and the public forgets? I mean, what's different here? Well, it, it, it's different for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the magnitude and the numbers of individuals um, succumbing to addiction and losing their lives. Uh, and this is, this is uh, uh, relatively recent. In the, in the past 10 to 15 years, these numbers have spiked up. Uh, so the difference is that, uh, that, that the, uh, the crack cocaine issue, which is, was a, a, a terrible, terrible issue, but it didn't have the potency of the medication that exists right now. Right now, carfentanil and fentanyl exist in, in a way that, uh, uh, that, that uh, um, uh, kill individuals with, with very small doses. Uh, the cost of, of uh, illicit uh, drugs, the cost of heroin, for example, is significantly lower than it has been. So the access to these drugs is, is, is that much greater. So uh, it, it may be cyclic in terms of, of generational engagement or involvement, uh, but as Kellyanne said, this, this knows no age distribution. It, it's affecting folks young and old uh, uh, across all demographics in our society. So we believe that it is, that it is different if only because of the potency of the medication and the, uh, the numbers of individuals who are succumbing to it. Yes, ma'am. Secretary Price, thank you. I do have a question for Kellyanne, but first to you. Why has the president not officially declared the opioid crisis a national emergency, and does he plan to? Well, most national emergencies that have been declared in, in, in the area of public health emergency have been focused on um, a specific area, a time-limited uh, problem, either an infectious disease or, or a, a specific uh, um, uh, threat to, to public health. The two most recent that come to mind are the Zika uh, outbreak and, and Hurricane Sandy. Uh, so um, we believe that at this point that, that the, uh, the uh, resources that, uh, that we need or the focus that we need to bring to bear to the opioid crisis at this point can be addressed uh, without the uh, declaration of an emergency, although all things are on the table for the president. So it's not imminent that he would do that, but it's on the table. All things are on the table. Kellyanne Conway, if you'd like to weigh in on that. And then also, if I can ask about the President's comments on North Korea. He said that North Korea, if they continue their threats, will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Can you explain specifically what he meant by fire and fury, that military action? No, I can't. I think the President's comments were very strong and obvious. I know all of you covered them live. And uh, I would defer to other members of Dr. Price's cabinet to comment further. And anything you want to add to the emergency status question? No, because I'll leave that to the health professionals, but I will tell you that the President and the First Lady are taking very seriously what is an absolute epidemic, and we see it that way also. We are uh, at, a, at a very peak level. And one thing I should have mentioned earlier that is a very important component here is destigmatizing. The, use, the misuse of, of substances. Um, we find time and again people are just too fearful to come forward and admit that they have a problem, admit it to the people closest, their family members, their friends, their colleagues. And also something that we discussed with the President and First Lady at length are the, very, the different accounts that we've heard in states, and you can see the stories for themselves. Um, we're so sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. We tried to save your son. In fact, we resuscitated him three or four times over the last six or eight months, but this time he was too far gone. And they say who, what, when they don't even know that their that their son or their loved one has had a substance misuse disorder, a substance uh, abuse disorder. And it, sometimes the privacy laws don't allow parents of a 19 year old, in fact, to be notified. So this is something of which we're very aware also. Um, the president's commission on the opioid crisis uh, recommended that the president urgently, immediately call this a national emergency because that frees up resources, that lifts some of these barriers, that allows more Medicaid recipients um, to go into treatment. Um, why, do you, why do you feel like that isn't something that needs to happen right now? I mean, was the commission 
wrong on this? Well, the, the, I mean, it was an interim report from the commission, and it's uh, and it's being reviewed at, at all different uh, levels uh, of the government. But everything that you just mentioned can be done, can be done, and many of it, much of it, is being done without the declaration of, of, of a national emergency, either a Stafford Act uh, uh, emergency or, or a public health emergency. So they so expanded to let more Medicaid recipients? Everything that you talked about can be done. Now, we're talking about what, uh, what, what should be done and working uh, uh, through the department and through the other agencies that, that, uh, that, that I mentioned to come forward with that coherent strategy, that comprehensive strategy and recommendation uh, for the president, and we'll do so in short order. Last okay. question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, just to follow up on something Kellyanne Conway said. So are you looking at changing privacy laws or HIPAA around drug addiction specifically? I guess either of you can answer it. Yeah, uh, th th this is really an important issue because uh, so uh, what, what, one of the things that we found when going around the country is that it's the local communities, it's the local loving community, the, 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 the families, the, the organizations within communities that are so pivotal to providing success for individuals getting through, uh, through the treatment and, and on to recovery. And so it's devastating for, for uh, anybody to, to learn of a family who is not able to be notified that one of their loved ones has, ha has had a problem with, with addiction because of privacy laws. So we're looking through the regulatory process to determine what can be done, if anything, to, to make it so that, that uh, the, those, uh, those requirements are not, those privacy requirements are not as onerous in the, in the uh, case of uh, of an overdose, uh, and it certainly is something that uh, that Congress could address, and we'll be talking uh, uh, with them, and have had conversations with many of them about that. Speaking of Congress, is the health care bit dead? <laughs> uh, the the, the health care challenge across this nation is not dead, uh, and, 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 so, and, and so what we what, what we believe needs to occur is that the Congress needs to uh, address the issue in a way that allows individuals to gain the kind of access to coverage and care that they need. Do you Thank you all so much. Thank you. You don't want to cut Medicaid drastically because the report uh, talks a lot about Medicaid being used. Nobody is interested in cutting Medicaid. And the budget the, and, and the, the fact of the matter budget. is that the president's budget and the proposals that were before Congress uh, were uh, 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 an, an effort to try to secure and make a Medicaid system work for patients. Uh, that's the goal that we have. We have one third of the physicians in this nation who ought to be seeing Medicaid patients who aren't seeing Medicaid patients. That's a system that may work for the federal government, it may work for insurance companies, it may even work for Medicaid programs, but it doesn't work for patients. The president's goal, the president's desire, our focus and our desire is to make certain that we have a health care system that works for patients. Thank you all. On better prosecutions. On better prosecutions. Kellyanne, is the president escalating the conflict in North Korea?